Anglicans for Life has been the resource and the parachurch ministry in the Anglican communion for all these years to equip you to um, publish good resources, host a website, um, host major events that are way more than we ever expected to do. Um, we do all of this to equip you because we recognize that if we can be the clearinghouse, if we can kind of collect all the best information, we can help uh, shortcut, if you will, you're having to invent the ministry and invent the work in your church. We want to be, in essence, your supplier of resources, publications, advice, networking, connections. We have been doing this a long time. I personally have been doing this for 20 years, standing for life. And it's because of what we see happening in the local parish that we stay inspired. Because we can't do all of that from an office, two offices in Pittsburgh with a staff of five folks. It's you all that are making this incredible difference. Not only have we published all these great things, this year we have published a new resource for youth. Um, Sammy, back there, came to me last year before the bishops, I, I, yeah, I guess it was before the bishops had asked us about the youth. At her um, job review, she said, I have this idea for a curriculum for young folks that we could give to youth leaders to help educate students about the sanctity of life, starting with the sanctity of their own life. Our students need to appreciate who they are and be rooted in Christ. She said they need the abundant life that he offers us, but they're being dragged down the road that Satan desires to steal, kill, and destroy them. So Sammy said, we need a, a curriculum for them. So I said, okay, go for it, <laughs> not really knowing what that was going to entail. And um, so this week, we are debuting that new curriculum. And so what I think about is God knew this was all going to happen because the bishops called us to this youth project. Sammy had this idea, and the convergence has come together. So this is the year of the youth. This is the year when we really want to be... Um, taking our work with the churches up another notch. We have great equipment, and now our goal this year in 2019 is to make sure that every one of your churches gets access to that equipment and is using that equipment so we can make a difference together for life. So um, why do we create resources to educate, empower, and inspire you? Um, we do it to save you the hassle of trying to figure it out, as I said earlier. But we also do it because we want to help some special people. I have a um, picture, Sammy. There we go. There's two pictures up on the wall. And I, you know, it's easy to talk in general terms, but I really always think that it's important that we bring it back to the reality. The picture on the left is uh, with a little white fur animal behind her or in front of her is Julia. Julia is nine years old, and I met her when she was in her mama's womb. We helped her mom choose life. We provided a crib for her, a lot of moral support and prayer support, prayed her into a job, and Julie's mom and I have stayed in close contact all these years, so I get to continue to watch her grow. We have learned in helping abortion vulnerable women that we now share in, this, in presentations and resources, and we want to help equip you to help abortion vulnerable women. Because when you can see a picture of a child that you have helped make it through pregnancy, that you can see this child and say, God used us to protect her life in the womb. It inspires you to keep going. On the other side of the slide on the right side is Betty. Betty has Alzheimer's, and I'm her power of attorney. 
I take care of everything and everything that I have learned in caring for my buddy, Betty. She's my spiritual mom. She led me to the Lord 30-some years ago. Um, so it's a real honor. But we've had to learn how to handle preparing for aging and dying. And we share that now in Embrace the Journey. Everything we've lived through, we now give back to the Lord. The experiences of Sammy growing up, the experiences I've had, all of that gets put into our resources to better, to, to not only make the resources um, usable and, and technically correct, but also to put the heart into these things because it's all about people and relationships, right? I mean, isn't that what God is all about? So it's easy to talk about numbers, like there have been 60 million abortions in the U.S. since 1973. But the critical thing to do is to realize that every number represents a person that carries God's image and breath a person with inherent dignity and worthy of Christ dying for them on the cross. We are here today because God is calling us to protect the Julias from abortion and the Bettys from assisted suicide. We are here today to help the next generation make better choices about faith and life. You are here today by no accident. While we all know that God is all powerful and can do anything, including moving mountains, a big portion of how God moves in the world today is through his people, you and me. You are here today because God wants to move through you to make a difference in the lives of people he is going to put in your path in 2019 and in the years to come. Our prayer has been and will continue to be that you receive the vision of ministry that God wants you to do, that God wants to do through you while you are here at the March for Life pilgrimage. And Anglicans for Life is here to help you all along the way. As I said earlier, there have been approximately 60 million babies aborted in the U.S. since 1973, over a billion worldwide since 1920. And over 66,000 adults have died by euthanasia and assisted suicide worldwide since 1998, with over 3,000 alone in the U.S. Culturally, death, hate, violence, massive self-centeredness self -centeredness has made a mockery of the sacredness of life from conception to natural death. But Psalm 139 reminds us, God created our inmost being. He knit you together in your mother's womb. We can praise him because we are fearfully and wonderfully made. He saw our unformed bodies and all our days are written in his book. God's word declares God's truth about the value of life from Genesis to Revelation. So while there exists a great chasm between man's way and God's way, let's pray that today God will show us how he can use us to bridge that chasm with his love and the gospel of Jesus Christ. So to get our day started, let's open with prayer. Let us pray. Oh, Lord, thank you for getting us to this moment in time. Thank you for our great team that brought this event together. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for each person here. Thank you for creating us and all of creation. And we are humbled that you have made us in your image and have entrusted us to care for one another. As we commit this day to you, we ask for your Holy Spirit to come and inhabit the hearts of your people. Fill our minds and our wills with your thoughts and your plans. Give us the courage to care for life, the unborn, the elderly, the vulnerable. Give us courage to be used by you to influence our culture, our communities, our churches by bearing witness to the sanctity of life. 
Give us courage to take up the cause of life using the ideas you place in our imaginations today. May we, as sisters and brothers in your Anglican family, be faithful encouragers of one another throughout this day and this evening. Fill us, Lord, with your vision of life. All for your glory, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.